place. Right? Okay. Uh, what I was saying was that if Anika, if anybody wants to introduce themselves, maybe they can just. Yeah. So. So if you if you have questions or big things that are on your mind, please feel free to drop that in the chat. But if you want to just introduce yourself and say hello, feel free to join uh, with video or, or just audio. If you you know, we we don't yeah. all have the the beautiful lighting rigs that that Nika has, so no complaints. Uh, I currently have, if in case anyone's curious, seven lights uh, running in this little office. I built this office for the purpose of live streaming from it. So uh, th there you go. But. Um, Oh, we got somebody else. Hey, this is so nice. We're getting a nice turnout. So, uh, yeah, if you just want to say hello, either in chat or or join the call, we'll um, uh, do some quick int introductions, and then we're going to talk a little bit today about the collector. And I'll 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 save my funny stories until until after we give people a chance to to, to hop on about uh, the collector and and my my initial my initial confusions. Yeah. That's for the stories. Hey, yes, thanks for joining in. Yeah, hi, everyone. So do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Just to uh, uh, see who, are, who all are here. Uh, yeah, sure, I can go quick. Um, so I am um, the founder of a SaaS business, and uh, we've been looking at potentially using signals. I'll be honest, I haven't used it yet in production, but uh, mm -hmm. it's something that we're looking at very seriously. Um, whether we self-host or not, that's another decision to be made, but uh, I'm right now just learning. Yeah, you know, looking at tools to really capture. We have a very complex SaaS with lots of data to capture. Mm -hmm. um, so signals is something that's been on my radar for a while. So yeah, I'm happy to learn more. Yeah, nice, thanks for talking. Yeah, of course. That's awesome. I'm actually writing something now about like um, decisions about like self-hosting observability and some of the considerations. So that's great, great that we're that we're at that point. Um, so yeah. I, I should let me introduce myself because I'm a new face in this little community. My name is Noshnika. I use she her pronouns. You'll see in my little my little thing. Uh, but um, I was previously at New Relic and then worked with a, a team called Telemetry Hub that was also trying to do open source observability here in the US. Uh, the whole time that that was happening, I was watching Cygnus happen and watching the great Cygnus community bloom. And so I was very excited. And so I have like, you know, when I when I got pinged about Cygnus, I was like, oh, yes, 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 yes. So I've been super excited to join the community. I have been um, diving deep on... Kubernetes observability. That's not what we're we're going to be chatting about this time, unless somebody has specific questions about it. But um, but that's what I've been in in, in the couple of weeks since I joined. But um, uh, yeah, I spoke recently at the Open Source Summit North America about the collector and about uh, engineering a good process. And so I've seen kind of the full range of the hotel experience, all the way from hey, we're a three person development shop and we just need to know if the site up or down to you know, there are hundreds of us and we're trying to, you know, it takes us half an hour to coordinate a push to staging. How can we be helped by 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 open telemetry? So, you know, the kind of both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. My gosh, I'm first of all, thank you so much, everybody, for for coming out. That's really, really nice. Uh, you know, first Chris community call in a little bit. And um Back at back at New Relic, you didn't get this. You can get people actually coming to your community events and stuff. So uh, that's uh, that's very special for me. Yeah, at yeah. Signals, you will see lots of people joining in and also asking a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> so be ready for that also. This is, you know, the degree that working with open source feels like a team sport has always been like a really basic thing for me that you know, uh, working in my first few roles in enterprise things where big, big teams have these huge purchases and use your product a ton and just never tell you anything about it. And it was just like, it was like the coffee machine at their office. Like they could love it or hate it, but they would never tell you that fact. Whereas, uh, you know, working here and looking through issues and seeing people like diving deep into how is this really engineered and stuff, it's just fantastic. 
All right. So shall we dive in a little bit to the collector? So I, I wonder if, if you'll get us started. Like, uh, like, how do you understand the collector? How did you first come to like interact with it? And what are some some special things about about using it with Signals? That was a lot. Let's start with what is the collector? That was too much. I gave you too much to start with. Yeah, I think uh, collector is basically sort of the main uh, sort of the orchestrator in open telemetry, where you send like to make open telemetry work, uh, you need to send data to something, and then uh, the hotel collector processes it, and then it sort of sends data to uh, a backend where data store or like visualization engine, right? Yeah. So and yeah. primarily does like three components. One is uh, the receiver, where you can have different type of receiver. You can listen to different sources like AWS CloudWatch. Uh, Redis and like the hotel community has a whole set of receivers there. Uh, then processor, which is which is like it does some processing on the data which is received and then uh, does export uh, exporters right, which exports uh, the data to the uh, next thing. For example, in Signals, we we have a Signals exporter which exports to Signals data warehouse, etc. Right, and and I think that's that's the key. Key way I understand it, collector, that you receive data from some places, uh, you process it, and then you send it to uh, the next uh, data store or like front end where you want to do more things with it, right? And, and yeah, that, that's how I understand uh, the collector as of now. And I think the key piece is there is the modular architecture which it has, which is like you can have these three stages and then for each stage you can have different components uh, which uh, which you can use and then sort of tie your own data pipeline together yeah i do think that's a that's a a, a key part i'm going to open a graphic in just a sec which is like showing thinking about the the modularity of that collector i think there were two things that got me early on as i was starting with open telemetry the first was um back in my like corporate observability is the collector was like the endpoint it was the place that gathered all the data including the database and so i spent longer than i am than i am confident enough to admit uh like two months being like oh that's what the collector is and then be like then someone being like oh no it actually runs a collector on every single like lambda that it's running and i'm like wait no that's no that's wrong <laughs> how could you like someone was talking about a stateless collector and i was like that's not possible and so then I I I learned uh, the 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 correct thing. And then I think the other part that surprised me is that, you know, since a collector is something that is passing information through and can be making semi logical decisions all based on that information, you can absolutely have one collector connected to another, right? So you can have multiple collectors running inside of you know sub clusters. Oh, we got another entrant. Um, and and so that it can be totally reasonable to say before you actually hit the data back end, we're going to have it hit yet another collector for for some other final purpose, e.g. like, hey, you have like five subclusters and then you want to do averaging between all of them because you have some very high level metric that you want to see. Um, then that can make sense to say, hey, we have one collector is just speaking directly to another. Yep. Um, and then let's talk about like, you know, so modular means you could really be going anywhere, right? You could you could be doing uh, uh, many, many possible things. So let me just um, open this image that I love of this. Uh, one sec. No, that's permissions for screen sharing. I want to screen share. Share. All right. Yeah. So, so this is this concept about the modularity thereof. And I mean, of course, the part that really matters to me is like, you can see OTLP on both sides, right? Like you can be going in and out with, with the open telemetry uh, protocol. Um, but so some of the use cases that we're often talking about with a collector, the most common, right, is like some kind of aggregation and rate limiting to say, like, don't just send metrics every single moment. So what I've seen in the past, pre pre hotel days, is I've seen things like um, uh, implementations on mobile or implementations like way out at edge, where 
maybe the like large monolithic monitoring had really nice like batching and and rate limiting um out on edge it didn't and so just sort of every time a transaction would occur it would send a packet and that looked totally fine in in staging and in test but then when you actually got it out to production was was a complete nightmare for just what the rate of data was that was sent have you seen cases Renee, where you like really wish like oh i wish we had some kind of batching here for this uh for this data send yeah, I think batching is one of the key use cases, like one of the many times which people want to use. And uh, essentially want people to send, uh, like batch things and start sending data, right? I think one thing which we might, you might want to also share is the is the different receivers in open telemetry like that. I don't know if many people are aware of that. Or do you, do you want me to share that? I can share that. Yeah, if you if you have like a good like image or list thereof, uh, feel free to get that up. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty key. So like something we were talking about this morning as we were talking about this call and, and just in general was um, yeah, if you go and look at the um, matrix of like what is supported in the different language process for, for o projects for open telemetry, you'll see that logs, I think, are not listed as like ready in any of them. And so you think, oh, my God, that's really not ready for prime time. You got to have some logs. But of course right? Like we are already all exporting logs, right? We're not going in, you know, VP, we're not going in like telnetting in and, 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 and loading logs manually, right? To the console to see our logs. So this is part of the real power of the collector, right? It's like, hey, you're already exporting logs. There is probably already an ingest path to get those logs into open telemetry. Yeah. Let me just quickly share this open telemetry. Uh, like the different models. So I think Nika shared uh, that there are like three key components, right? One is the receiver, the second is processor, and then the third is exporter, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go to this open telemetry collector contrib repo, so this is a uh, sort of the place where anybody who sort of builds a receiver or an exporter can uh, upstream it here, and then anybody in the community can use it, right? So uh, let's start with the receiver, right? So if you see here, there are like lots of receivers. So AWS X-Ray receivers, if you're on Azure, uh, Azure event hub receiver, and then there are uh, receivers like file receiver, which is like the standard file log receiver and file receiver. But then there are things like host metrics receiver where you can start getting data from host metrics here, JMX receiver, Kafka receiver, right? So there are a bunch of, places where you can start receiving data from uh, by default, right? And and so this is the sort of uh, modularity concept which you're saying that, okay, if you have a MongoDB uh, implemented, you can just enable MongoDB receiver in the open telemetry collector, and that will start uh, uh, getting data from MongoDB, like the metrics of MongoDB, et cetera, right? So, uh, so it's it's a it's a very modular modular way to get data from different type of systems which you might be using, and the second piece is the processor where like basically once you have the data you have to do things like add, changing the attributes. Hey, the one nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, so you have to uh, do attributes processing. You can do uh, like if, uh, for example, Kubernetes attributes processor, we use this a lot where like you have different uh, attributes which are being sent, and then you want to sort of transform that attribute to something else, or uh, like log transform receive processor where you want to, you're getting logs in some format and then you want to transform it to something else, right? Yeah, and this so, is actually a critical one. Like I don't mean to just skim over that one because both the logs and the metrics transform are really key for a couple things and most notably for like filtering PII. Right, like yeah. when you you're gonna realize inevitably as you as you have success that there's some really critical personal information that is getting monitored accidentally, right? In a metric name, in in something, and so you really want to make sure that you're familiar with that just as a basic level, right? When you start. Uh, yeah, and then one one key type of things which is uh, which is possible through sa through processors is sampling. So basically. Uh, for organizations which are sending lots of data, especially uh, for traces, 
like uh, open telemetry has this thing called tail sampling processor, uh, probabilistic sampling process, probabilistic sample processor, which helps you sort of uh, reduce the amount of data which sort of gets ingested into your data stores, right? So people can use this to uh, yeah, basically save their cost on and store like what is important for them rather than storing everything. And yeah, yeah tail sampling to... processor is really big for traces there. That's like a that's I, I I have not implemented a lot of this stuff, but I've definitely pointed people to here on the CNCF project. I know people have had a lot of success with it, but like you know, when you say, hey, you're not gonna you don't want to send a trace of every single thing that you that you do, right? That every user does. Um, and while sort of the the generic way to do that is just, hey, let's just send a, a percentage of those that go through. That's <clears throat> that or any from the top decision is head-based sampling. You can also say, like, hey, this user is more important, right? This user has more, I, I don't know, mad trading cards on their account. So let's trace their interaction head base right but tail base you can say hey like the the the, the traces that look the worst i want to send um and yeah. then if your collector is on your network right you're sending nothing over the wire that you're not interested in which is very nice yeah and uh just to tie a little deeper so one use case which you see here especially for companies which are business to business is that they want to sample based on particular customers so if you're a business and then uh, you have different customers. If you just do probabilistic sampling or head of a sampling, you don't know which customer is getting sampled how much, right? So what you can do in uh, tail based sampling is you can specify, uh, okay, this is a customer, this is like, uh, use customer as the ID and then have an, okay, for each customer I will sample 20% or 30% order. Right? So you know that for each customer, you are getting certain amount of data. So this is pretty fascinating. And uh, like maybe Anika, we can do a session on sampling itself. Uh, yeah, but but not today. Uh, yeah, but that's yeah, two. The, that's two now we can plan. One obviously on Kubernetes monitoring and one on sampling, yeah. Yeah, and, and like just to complete the piece. So the third piece is, so first was a receiver, second is processor, and the third piece is exporter, where uh, like now you can export it to different places like you have got the data you have processed it and then you can export it to different places right and if you see like there is clickhouse exporter you can expose to clickhouse and then there are different vendors where you can export to we also have signals exporter but it's not like uh, upstream yet but like you can export to prometheus etc etc right so these are basically the data sinks which store this data which have received and uh, processed and then you want to export it later yeah, this is uh, like one of the like key things I think for really large orgs is like just the ability to say, hey, how locked in are we to like a particular approach, right? And and if you if, even if you're not like actually changing your provider and you're just saying, hey, I'm going to start sending you more open telemetry data. Like the more hotel you adopt, the more ready you are to say like, hey, let's just get a different exporter and just send this data someplace else. Yeah, I, I guess uh, let's stop for a bit and see if uh, anybody has any questions. Uh, or if anybody has tried implementing this and faced any issues. What beverages do we go with, folks? Do we? I, I just went with water, which is boring, but. Normally for live streams, I'm like, I must have three beverages at all times, but somehow I just ended up with the Kirkland water. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, what else you had Nika, to discuss? Uh, your audio just suddenly got super low, but. So I was just saying, uh, what there else we did, did we have to discuss? Um, this was a lot of it. <laughs> Uh, this is like i you know if, if people had like questions about using the collector or if they've had like weird experiences i wanted to talk through that uh but yeah and i don't want to dive too far into sampling but i i think it does matter but um yeah if people have other questions feel feel free to hop on yeah i actually have one question right uh the previous day i was uh learning about open telemetry or collector. So I so I found a term there, it's called service discovery. So if you could please let me know what is that. 
service discoveries. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, so con conceptually, right, like service discovery is supposed to allow you to say, hey, um, when something starts offering, uh, you know, new metrics to the collector endpoint, we will go ahead and add it to our map automatically. Um, and there's a ton of ways to configure this, right? You can say, you can have it as part of like the resources that are available in a container to say, hey, we want to instrument automatically. And so therefore have it grab and discover new service names to report. Pranay, can you speak about this a little, a little further or? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so just to sort of uh, make this more concrete. So uh, service discovery can be done in many ways. So uh, like if you are in Kubernetes, you have different services. And then yes. based on the metrics you see, you can discover like different services which are there. Uh, the other way you can do is through like uh, the tracing. For example, in this example, what we are doing is uh, we are creating a service map uh, for your for your infrastructure, right? That uh, if you have different services which are talking to each other, uh, what we do is uh, through the tracing data and because in tracing data, we have uh, the knowledge that, okay, this service is talking to this service and the service is talking to this service, right? So we use that data and extract out and provide you a sort of bird's eye view on how your infrastructure is correct, is sort of structured, right? And here you can see details like, okay, like one is like how fast is, is the transaction volume between different services. And then also if a service is healthy or not. So if you see this, uh, like the error rate is zero, so this is green. But here we are seeing some 18% error and hence, hence this is red, right? So uh, what it helps you do is it helps you sort of get a bird's eye view on where you should focus your attention on and uh, uh, like how your services are connected to each other, basically. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah service service discovery is super important as a as a piece of tooling because um something that I have definitely seen I've been working with observability tools for well since since before we called it observability and there's kind of this dirty secret about trace data which is like metrics data very often like has a relatively high usage rate of like 50% of that data is accessed at some point right now it might be uh, aggregated, right? But you still actually look at it. You don't report a metric and then never chart it or never view it, right? But what is the percentage of traces that are never viewed? Does anybody have a guess about that? The percentage of traces that are not viewed. It's it's like the percentage of viewed traces in most systems is like the percentage of helium in the solar system. It's like, you know, 0.00001%, right? Most traces. <laughs> go total well if you think about individual traces right like hey the trace of this transaction right you have some rate mm -hmm. maybe you're sending 25 traces a cycle right and then when you have an outage you go flip through 10 15 traces right so out of the whole day of maybe thousands of traces sent during a problem you're going to look at a few of them so what was interesting what what we found this was um back in open tracing days was that the map was what people wanted. So we were we were explaining to people, hey, here's how you track all these spans and the individual time chunks and maybe even the individual parameters on each of these spans. And people would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's what I want. You hear this phrase over and over again. Just show me which services got hit by this request. That's all I want. I don't, I don't care about what happened in each service. I just want to know which service got hit. Because that's the reality of, you know, microservice architecture, right? Is that there's just, there's a lot of services running, a whole lot of services running. And that leads to a feeling of like, I do not know which services are even affected by this. So you get a call and you, you know, you hear, hey, service 21A is down. And someone asks, well, can users still check out on the e-commerce site with service 21A down? And your answer is always these days, I don't know, right? And so you wish you could go look at a trace and just know, Yes, a checkout event does hit service 21A. And that's that's yeah. the question that way more people have than, again, like the actual details from a trace. Yeah, but but to, I think to be fair, you are maybe not accessing a particular trace, but you are using that in an aggregate way to get insights, yes. right? For example, you may not be accessing the detail of the trace, but you are using the service map to view it. Uh, you yes. may not be accessing specific trace, but you are creating 
like the P99 and the APM matrix to that. Yeah, so that, go sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying that that helps you, like, in a way you're using trace, but you're like not opening the complete trace, but you are using the aggregate information from there and getting some insights there. So this is how, you know, this was kind of an out of date example because in the, in the start of open tracing, you really, it wasn't good like tagging of spans. So you, you, you would get spans, but you could not be like, how long does this span normally take, right? In, in early implementations. And so this was the part of the argument as to why that was important, right? Is that people are not going to click through and look through individual traces, but yes, if you can aggregate together, like how long is the span taking in general, that of course was going to be very useful. And then, yeah, uh, uh, the big thing was how can this inform a service map and do service discovery to show what nodes are being hit on that network? Cool. Uh, we are almost uh, about end of so we'll be doing these every two weeks i think is our is our is our target cadence uh yeah. for the next little while but please do hit us up on the um community slack if you have questions and i think that's what we'll start uh for st start next monday is we'll just say hey you know, hit us up with questions and start a thread of, of questions to answer as we go through it here's our theme uh but also just uh, this is it's so nice to see everybody uh, hop on thank you so much like this is really really nice and uh, i'm i'm super duper looking forward to it um i did not get together for this time but we'll do it next time uh like most helpful community members we'll be handing out little uh chintzy awards to the people who have like helped other users i i really really appreciate seeing that on the slack so we'll be tracking that um and i think there's even talk of maybe some kind of leaderboard that we'll want to be releasing uh, on the site to say like here's some people who are super helpful to to those around them yeah, so I, I pinned this a link to a Slack group if anybody have any specific questions about signals or like if you try signals and have any questions or just in general open telemetry, if you're trying to implement it and any questions around it. Uh, we have been working with open telemetry since last two years now and like have a bit lot of sort of, we know some of the uh, edge cases around open telemetry. So just feel free to ping us there and uh, we should be able to help you out there. And if you're watching this video uh, 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 panned a little later than um, uh, Monday, July 10th, uh, do look down below in the description. You'll see the links are attached there, both to a couple of the points that we're talking about the documentation and to join us on Slack and to RSVP for next time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, we're going we're gonna to call it there. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, guys. Very helpful. Thank you.